Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi and welcome to Postscript. I'm Lou Ann Riley, Grow Group and Discipleship Director, and I am here with Michael Sully Sullivan, who just brought our Father's Day message. Welcome, Sully. Thanks. All right, what a great message. Um, I loved that you talked about all the variety of emotions mm -hmm. and responses that a day like Father's Day can bring. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about how uh, you can celebrate your father um, just with your personal stories and things of your father, but then also on the other side of the spectrum um, for people that this day might be painful or bring other emotions. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things you talked about was for people who are desiring to be free of that and mm -hmm. to be healed of maybe wounds from their childhood or ongoing situations that they're mm -hmm. struggling with, that one of the first steps um, was to come and have prayer today mm -hmm. in the prayer center, through our pastoral team, mm -hmm. um, but to really seek prayer first. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say are the next steps beyond prayer? Sure. Well, I'll talk about prayer for a second because I do think that is a very important first step that I didn't want us to miss this morning. Uh, that's why I asked our congregation to pray I pray healing for uh, the individuals who are experiencing that and then wanted to invite people to the prayer center to have a chance to pray with someone because I do think that's a very important first step. Uh, but if you are going to move towards the next step, I think the next step is to have a conversation. Um, I think a lot of times when we have pain in our lives, uh, if there's sin in our lives, our response to that is to push it down, mm -hmm. to not tell anyone because no one has ever experienced what I have. I don't want them to know. I'm afraid they'll think of me differently or think of me as lesser. And the reality is that's not true. That's a, a really good tactic of the devil to really make us think we're the only ones who could possibly ever struggle with this. But I was out at the atrium today and so many people coming up saying, that's my story. Uh, I've had these struggles. And so uh, I think that's why bringing it to the light through a conversation, I think the best way to do that would be uh, through pastoral care um, or a counselor, um, because a lot of times these things have sat um, undealt with for many years, and so you need to begin to uproot those things in a, in a safe place, a place where you can be asked hard questions and really have a chance to process those things. I think that's the second step is really a conversation with someone who has walked through that before, a counselor, a pastor, someone like that. And then the third thing that, that kind of builds off the second is to get in community. Mm -hmm. um, these things don't seem to go away easily. And the reason isn't that there can't be total freedom from them. It's that they tend to be in a lot of areas of our lives. Uh, and I kind of in my mind, I'm thinking of that game. It was an arcade game where the little uh, beaver would come out and you'd whack it, a whack-a-mole or whatever, and it keeps <laughs> and it coming comes out. Back of, up somewhere else. Yeah, it comes somewhere else. And that's really what happens with this: is you think, you know, oh, my father issues are just in the way that I'm going to parent. I'm going to go and be the best father because I didn't have a good dad, or I'm not going to be a father at all because I don't want that experience to happen to anyone else. And so we start to deal with it in that, and then we realize, wait. This father wound takes place at my work environment, that I'm not as confident because I didn't have a father who encouraged me, who told me that he was proud of me or that I was good at something. And so it begins to come up over here or in a relationship with a spouse that they might leave you or it comes up in a lot of areas. So I think being in community, being with a group of people who know your story, who know the things that you've dealt with so that they can continue to say, no, that's not true. And here's why and point you back to the gospel. So I think those are three steps, prayer, a conversation with a professional, and then moving into community from there. That's good. Okay, so um, let's talk about fathers who were listening today and been thinking, I really didn't get this right. Um, or I'm really struggling with following any of these. Maybe I'm a new believer. Um, or I've got my own issues, and so I'm feeling like I've really messed this up, or I'm messing this up. Um, what would you say for fathers who are wanting to move forward? Mm -hmm. Well, when I think about that, I really think there's two groups. There's probably a father who um, the kids are present, still with him. Uh, maybe they're 
a young child or a teenager or someone where they're still involved in the life of the child, or uh, the second group is probably those who uh, maybe through a divorce or, or something, some reason the kid is no longer with you, maybe they're grown. Uh, and so let me speak to each of those individually. The first group, those who the kids are still with you, like I said today, the beauty of the gospel is that your past does not define you or your future. And I think both of those are distinct. The reason I said both is I think a lot of times we grab an identity of I'm a bad father and I'm always going to be a bad father and that's who I am. No, that's not. That's not what the gospel says. It says that we can be made new. And so that's who you are is set free. You're loved. You're worthy. And who you are going to be is a transformed in the image of Christ. That's what we're moving towards. There's a hope. There's a future. So I think as a father, it's not too late. Um, now, I'm not a father, uh, so I can't speak necessarily to all the practical things, but I can think back to my childhood and think of a few things. Uh, first, I would encourage fathers, don't go at this alone. I think a lot of times, it's a, especially as men, we like to muscle up and we can do this and will ourselves, but don't do that. Here at FaithBridge, so many resources. I've been with our kids' ministry all week at VBS. It's incredible. The people that are here serving, that love these kids, who want them to know Jesus, the resources that are available on their teaching team, who's putting the gospel in a form that they can understand it, don't go at it alone with you being the only one teaching them. Engage here. And then pull from the resources that are here. I was thinking uh, back to when I was a kid, my dad used to read Bible stories with me. And he wasn't a Bible scholar. He just pulled out the Bible and we would read a story together. And then we would maybe talk about it for a few minutes. And the Jesus Storybook Bible that we have at our resource center is incredible. It puts the stories of the Bible in this context where you can read it with them. And I think that's a good practical step. I, when I look back as I was thinking about this sermon a lot, I thought, what was outside of my dad telling me that he loved me? What was a big thing? And my brother and I actually discussed this, and we said time. Mm. My dad did such a good job of spending time with us and... When I was preparing, I read a stat that said, I think roughly 25 to 40 percent of fathers spend less than an hour a day with their kids, about 40 minutes. Uh, the number that spend two hours uh, is like less than 75 percent. I mean, it, nobody. I mean, and so just devoting time. I mean, I can remember coming home and, and my dad was in his suit and we'd play basketball. Um, or do homework together. Just engaging, being in your kids' lives, being... My dad rarely missed a sporting event, you know, just was present. Uh, and I think time is a big one. Uh, and then pointing them when there are opportunities towards the gospel uh, with study, I, I would just begin to do those things. Engage. Don't let the fear of, I don't know how to do this, hold you back. Your kids want to be with you. Uh, and so that's what I would say, again, from a kid's perspective. And I'm always amazed at how quickly my children, as small children, forgive mm. quickly. Yeah. Um, they are just wanting time mm -hmm. and attention. And so I think if you have small children starting today, mm -hmm. tomorrow, um, you can build a whole different future. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you are in that second camp, though, where you're saying, hey, whether maybe your kids are teenagers and they don't listen to you anymore um, or uh, they are grown and gone and, and you may be thinking, I blew this and there's no chance. I think Dan preached a sermon on Mother's Day that was particularly relevant for that group. Uh, he talked about this ring road that I just thought was really revolutionary. And I can't think of in the moment right now all of the rings, but I remember there were three or four rings. And I know for sure on the outer edge, he talked about you need to first, if you want to engage in a relationship, restore relationship that's got pain or damage, the first step is to be at a place where there's no harm, uh, not a desire to do harm. And you know, a lot of times if, if you have been a wounding father, you need to be at that place first where I have no intent of physical, emotional oh, harm. Anger. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so you may need to deal with that first and the counseling, pastoral care that we've talked about previously. Um, but you need to be at a place where you are healthy first. I think that'd be a good, so no harm. And then you begin to move towards reconciliation. And the difficult thing about reconciliation is it doesn't always mean relationship. Uh, just because you begin to pursue reconciliation and say, hey, I want to do this differently, uh, 
these are the things God is doing in my life and I, I want to be a father to you. You can begin to show those things, but your kids may have been hurt um, and need time to heal themselves. And so you begin to pursue reconciliation to show a heart that's been transformed by the gospel, to love unconditionally, even when they don't love you back. And then if the opportunity presents itself, you move towards a relationship. Uh, and again, all of that takes time. A, a lot of that takes healing. Um, and so I think that's, that's where you head. Um, that, that would be maybe the steps for those who currently their uh, kids are, are gone or are not at a place where they're hearing from them. So That's good. That's good. And so many different responses to both Mother's Day and, and Father's yeah. Day, um, that there is a lot of um, things that come with those relationships. But mm -hmm. I love how you just pointed us back to God is our perfect parent mm -hmm. um, and the way that He loves us. And so what Jesus did on the cross is offer us the healing mm -hmm. um, in all of these situations. So thank you for such a great message. Thanks. All right, and thank you for being here with us at Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.